Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve the problem number 1.63 from Idodo and that is related to dynamics. So let us first understand the problem and then we will solve the problem step by step. Here we are having an inclined plane which is making an angle of alpha with the horizontal and we are having two masses M1 and M2 which are connected using the threads and the pulley and there is no friction between the pulley and this thread so we can write mu is equal to 0 between pulley and the thread but there is the friction between mass m1 and the inclined plane and the coefficient of friction is given as let us say k okay and we have to find out the ratio of m2 upon m1 in three different cases first case is when m2 is going in the downward direction and in the second case m2 is going in the upward direction and in the third case we have to find the ratio m2 by m1 when m2 is at rest condition so let us first talk about the first case when m2 is going in downward direction in downward direction okay so let us draw the free body diagram of mass m2 so this is mass m2 we will have the gravitational force in the downward direction that is m2 into g and let us assume that in the thread we are having the tension force of t which is same at every points in this thread and it will act in the upward direction because the thread will always try to pull the mass m2 it cannot push the mass okay and as it is going in the downward direction let us say the acceleration is in this particular direction so if we write the force equation we can write it as m2g minus t is equal to m2 into a so this is our first equation now let us draw the free body diagram of mass m1 so this is mass m1 which is placed on the inclined plane and which is making an angle of alpha so we will have the gravitational force in this direction that is m1 into g and then we will have the normal force from the inclined surface and the tension force in this particular direction because the thread will try to pull this particular mass m1 okay and as it is the mass m2 is going in this particular direction in this direction so this mass m1 will go in the upward direction so it will attain some sort of velocity after certain time so in this particular direction we will it will gain the velocity so we will have the friction force of mu into n in the opposite direction of the velocity. Let us take the component of m1g in the normal and the tangential direction. So this is the component of m1g into cos alpha as this particular angle is alpha. So this angle will be 90 minus alpha and if this angle is 90 minus alpha then this angle will be alpha so that's why i have written this particular component as m1g into cos alpha and this component will be m1g sin alpha as we don't have any acceleration in the normal direction so we can just balance the forces in the normal direction we can write n is equal to m1g cos alpha okay now let us uh, write the force equation in the tangential direction as it is having the acceleration in this direction we can write t minus m1g sin alpha minus mu n is equal to m1 into a okay let us substitute the value of this n here so we will get t minus m1g sin alpha minus mu m1g cos alpha is equal to m1 into a okay here we are having the second equation let us eliminate tension t from both the expression let us add equation 1 and 2 so we will get m2g m2g minus m1g sin alpha minus mu m1g cos alpha is equal to m1 plus m2 into a okay so in this particular case it is going in the downward direction with the acceleration a and as it is going in this particular direction the acceleration has to be positive okay so this quantity has to be greater than zero and if it is greater than zero for that case we can write m2g minus m1g sin alpha minus mu m1g cos alpha should be 
greater than 0 okay let us take the term of m1 to right side so we can write m2 g greater than m1 g times sine alpha plus mu cos alpha okay so g g will get cancelled and from here we can find m2 by m1 is greater than sine alpha plus mu cos alpha so this is the condition we got in which the mass m2 will move in the downward direction now let us take the another case in which mass m2 is going in the upward direction for that case let us first draw the free body diagram of mass m2 so in the downward direction we will have the gravitational force of m2 into g and in the upward direction we will have the tension force of t and as it is going in the upward direction let us assume that we will we are having the acceleration in the upward direction so we can write the equation of the force that is t minus m2 g is equal to m2 into a let us say this is our third equation now let us draw the free body diagram of mass m1 and it is placed in the inclined plane of uh, which is making an angle of alpha with the horizontal and we are having the gravitational force of m1 g in this direction and normal force from the surface of the inclined plane and tension in this direction because it will always pull the mass m1 the only difference is that the acceleration is in this particular direction and as it will attain some sort of velocity after a certain time in this direction so we will have the friction force in this direction and that we can write it as mu into n okay so uh, from here we can write the component of the gravitational force so this component will be m1 g into cos of alpha and this component will be m1 g into sin of alpha okay as we have seen this particular case in the previous one also so let us first balance the forces in the normal direction so this is normal direction and this is tangential direction so we can write n is equal to m1 g cos alpha and in the tangential direction we can write t uh, m1 g sin alpha minus t minus mu times n is equal to m1 into a let us substitute the value of this n here so we will get m1 g sin alpha minus t minus mu times m1 g cos alpha is equal to m1 into a now this is the fourth equation we are having let us eliminate t from equation 3 and 4 and let us add equation 3 and 4 so we will get m1 g sin alpha minus mu m1 g cos alpha minus m2 g m2 g is equal to m1 plus m2 into a as mass m2 is going in the upward direction and we have also assume that acceleration is in the upward direction so this particular quantity should be greater than 0 so here we can write m1 g sin alpha minus mu m1 g cos alpha minus m2 g should be greater than 0 so from here we can find m2 g is less than m1 g into sin alpha minus mu cos alpha okay so g g will get cancelled and from here we can find m2 upon m1 less than sin alpha minus mu cos alpha so this is the condition of the ratio of masses we got for the case when the m2 is going in the upward direction okay so let us write the conditions again when first case is when m m2 is going in the downward direction then we will have the ratio of m2 upon m1 is greater than uh, sin alpha plus mu cos alpha sin alpha plus mu cos alpha okay when m2 is going in the upward direction then we will have m2 upon m1 is less than sin alpha minus mu cos alpha okay and let us say m2 is at rest condition then 
we will have the condition of m2 upon m1 is less than sin alpha plus mu cos alpha and m2 upon m1 should be greater than sin alpha minus mu cos alpha and if we write these two conditions simultaneously then we can write it as m2 upon m1 should be less than sin alpha plus mu cos alpha and should be greater than sin alpha minus mu cos alpha now we are getting the range in which this particular ratio should be uh, such such way that m2 will be at rest so you may be wondering that okay let us take this acceleration is equal to 0 then we can able to find the one single value of m2 upon m1 but this is not the case because if we draw the friction force then it is actually going like this and then it is constant so this particular value is mu into n okay and before that if force is acting let us say this is the body we are having and if we apply the force here let us say f and here we are having the normal reaction of n and if force is less than mu into n if force is less than mu into n let us say we are having the force at this particular point if force is less than mu into n then the friction force is not dynamic it will be the static and the static force will be equal to f so that's why we are getting the range we are not get, getting the single value in the static condition the force may be equal to the net force which is acting in this particular direction okay so that's why we are getting the range of m2 upon m1 in the in the case of rest condition i hope the entire procedure is clear thank you